So in this video, I will show you how to model some simple glassware. So let's get into it. This is the image that we will render in this video. To begin, we're going to set up our scene. So first you delete the cube and the lamp, because we don't need those, but you can keep the camera. Select them and press X. We're then going to choose our render engine. So we'll go to the render properties and change it from EV to cycles, because that works a bit better with glass. It's a ray tracing engine, so we're going to need to denoise it a little bit. So go down to denoising and check just render. We don't need to denoise it in the viewport. Transparent background, so go down to film and check the box that says transparent. Because we're using glass, it's also quite nice to use good lighting, so we're going to use a haste OI file to light our scene. So open up the timeline and change the window type to shader editor. Switch it from object to world and then delete this background, so select it and press X. Press Shift A and add a new environment texture node. Connect the color to the surface and then open your HDI file. Now we're ready to start modeling our objects. So we'll start on our B flask. So to begin with that, we're going to add a sphere. So we press Shift A, add a new mesh, and add a UV sphere. We can go to edit mode, go to a top-down view, and to make a hole for our neck, we'll select this top uh, circle, press X, and delete the vertices. Quite a large hole, so I want to make it a bit smaller. So end X ray mode by pressing Alt Z. Go to a side on view. Select the top plane and then press S and scale it down a bit. We're then going to extrude a neck from this hole, so press E and Z to extrude along the Z axis, and then drag that up to the length that you want. So let's make a lip next. So press E to extrude and then S to scale. And then E to extrude again, Z to extrude along the Z axis and choose height for your lip. So that's the basic shape done. Go back to object mode. You see it looks quite uh, sharp and jaggedy. So let's add a subdivision surface modifier. Now, as many as you think that will make it look nice and smooth. So I'm going to add three. I'm going to leave XMO, so press Alt Z. So you can see it a bit clearer. And I'm going to right click and shade smooth. So now you can see it's sort of um, a sort of 2D plane that's been modeled into this shape. So we want to add some um, weight to it. So add a new modifier and add a solidify. Change the thickness to something you're happy with. So I'm going to put it at 0 0.05. Then you could choose the offset as either negative offset so it will extend inwards or a positive offset so it extends outwards. I'm going to leave it on minus one, that's fine. So that's our basic shape for our, our, our B flask. Now we're going to model the conical flask. So move this out of the way, press G and Y to move it out of the way, or just G and move it anywhere. So to start with our B flask, we're going to Start with the base of it. So press Shift A and add a two dimensional circle. Go to the Add Circle tab and choose the vertices to be about 100. Switch from Object Mode to Edit Mode and press F to add a face to this set of vertices. Go to a side on view. And press E to extrude. Then extrude to about there and then press S to scale, make it a little bit larger. Press E to extrude again and then S to scale again. So just make that a bit smaller. Uh, then add a neck, so press E, E, S to add a lip. 
and then E to add some height to the lip. This top um, will have a face to it, so press X and delete the faces. Now I want to make it look a bit smoother. So select this, um, actually in X mode, so press Alt Z. Select this second plane, press Control B to bevel it. Drag outwards until it's about there. And go to the bevel tab and add some more segments to it until it looks smooth. You're going to make this bottom circle a little bit smaller. So select the bottom one and just scale it down a little bit. Mm, no, I'm going to leave it actually. That's fine. Uh, you can do this one as well. So press Control B to bevel. And just drag it out until you're happy with it. So let's go back to object mode and right click and shade smooth. You can leave XO mode now, so Alt Z. Let's add a solidify modifier. And you can choose the same settings as I did for the RB clasp. So next we can add our materials. And also our markings for graduation and the size of the class and things like that. So go over to rendered view. I'm going to add a plane first, just so there's a sort of floor to these. So press Shift A, add a new mesh and a plane. Just scale that till it's quite large. I'm going to change the material of this plane to be just a normal principle BSTF with a base color of black. Then select the conical flask, add a new material, and change the surface from principal BSDF to glass BSDF. And then turn the roughness down. I'm going to turn it all the way down to zero. You can leave the index of refraction and also the color. On the RB flask, we already made the glass material, so just choose from the drop down menu and it's material 002. So now we're going to add our uh, markings on the flasks. So we're just going to go to the materials view so we can just you not know, have to wait for it to render every time I move something. Um, and go to your settings, go to edit preferences, and make sure that under the add ons, You've got an add-on called Images as Planes, so in, under the Import-Export add-ons. So just search for Images as Planes and make sure the box is, is checked. Once it is, when you press Shift-A and go down to Image, you'll see this option for Images as Planes. So I've pre-made some images, um, and I'll link them in the description. So select that. Pick the image that you want. So I'm going to choose this 500 mil marking. Under the settings, go to the as under the material settings of the picture, go to the display setting, the viewport display rather, and change the blend mode from alpha blend to alpha clip, just to make sure it's fully transparent. Press G to grab it and just make it as close to the edge of your flask as possible. So just move it around until it's about where you want. Press S to scale it until, it until you're happy with it. And then if you are happy, let me just check that that's close as possible. So if you're happy with it, we can then use a modifier to shrink that this image onto this surface. So before we do that, we're going to need to add some more geometry to it because currently it only has four vertices. So add a modifier, go to a subdivision surface. This time we want a simple one. 
and add about four levels to both the viewport and the render. Apply that modifier. And then we're going to add a shrink wrap modifier. So under deform, go down to shrink wrap. We want the target to be our RB flask. Change the offset so it's on top of the flask. And then once it's on there, you can scale it um, and move it around. But it's best to get that position good the first time as it doesn't distort too much. So if you're happy with that, let's make the markings on the conical flask. So shift A, insert an image of the plane. Uh, let's add the volume marker first. When it's close, it's in the position that you want. Once again, add some geometry to it by adding a subdivision surface. Make sure it's a simple one and it's got about four levels. Apply the modifier and then add a shrink wrap modifier. Select the target to be your flask and make sure the offset is about 0 0.01 meters. So finally, I'll add the uh, graduation to the conical flask. If it's close to the surface, same as before, add the simple subdivision surface. Apply it and then add the shrink wrap modifier. Okay, so now let's go to our rendered view. And then you can position these as you want that you think looks nice. So I'm just going to change this flask, so press, select the picture as well as the flask, so press shift and select. And I'm just gonna rotate that until it looks like it's sort of, so press R, until it looks like it's sort of lying on the, on the floor. Let's make the flask at the same level. And pick a camera view, camera angle. Go to view, align view, align active camera to view. So I'm gonna change it a little bit actually. I'm just gonna make it a bit more zoomed in. So something like that will do. Um, let's move it once more. And that's more or less fine. Um, I'm going to change the zoom of the camera a little bit. So select the camera and just going to change the focal length down to about 40. Okay, let's have a look how it looks in rendered view. Okay, so that looks fine. Let's go to render and then render image. And it should take a, probably a few minutes just to, to render it and if you can denoise it. 
So I hope this video has been helpful. And if you have any questions, please feel free to leave them in the comments. Thank you for watching.